I V M. I want to thank Intel for supporting our show. Do you remember last year when we spoke about how the Intel vPro platform is built for business? Well, I'm glad to say we've kicked it up a notch. That's right, Intel is back with a new and improved version of the platform. The new Intel vPro platform lets you do more of what you want and less of what you don't. So it's better for you and for your IT teams who really are the backbone of keeping your work from home experience easy and enjoyable. I can safely say that the new vPro platform gives you more enterprise efficiency with less constraints. Visit intel.in slash more with vPro, that's vPRO, to discover how you can get more done with less waiting. If you're listening on the IBM podcast Android app, click the link that's visible to you now. Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast, the bite-sized podcast filled with quick and easy actionable habits. Remember, great habits create that awesome life. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach, and today's fun fact of the day has to do with mushrooms. Did you know that it is close to impossible to overcook mushrooms? You will probably have to be a really, really, really bad cook or an absolute genius to be able to burn mushrooms. When you cook meat on a stove for 40 minutes, it starts getting tough and hard. When you cook zucchini or vegetables for 40 minutes, they become mushy and yucky. And you forget mushrooms on the stove for even 50 minutes or more, come back and you will find them perfectly tender. The reason for this is the way the mushroom cell walls are made. It is made of chitin, which is a polymer that is very heat stable. The cell walls of vegetables are made of pectin and they disintegrate with heat, hence turning into mush. With meat, heat makes the protein tense up and hence makes it tough. So isn't that amazing? You can now cook mushrooms without fear of screwing up the dish. My favorite way of cooking mushrooms is to first saute them in a splash of water. No oil. What this does is it starts the cooking process for the mushrooms. They start becoming tender and they release their own water. Once the water is evaporated and the mushrooms are dryish, that's when I add the butter or the olive oil. This way the flavor of the butter and the olive oil remains fresh and you can not use so much olive oil as you would have earlier on. To be fancy, I sometimes add some garlic, maybe a little chili, some rosemary, salt, pepper, along with butter to cook these. Remember, the mushrooms will not overcook, so you can take your time extracting the flavor from the garlic. Now. Isn't that easy? You have learned a new dish or a style of cooking. It is actually very sad that most of us do not experiment with new kinds of food. We are afraid that we might end up screwing things up, that the food will be wasted, that the family will go hungry and people will shout at us. As a result, the average home will have about 10 go-to dishes that they keep making in rotation over a week. Now, not only are you going to get the same kind of food over and over and over and over again, which is okay. But the nutrition, the nutrition profile of all these foods also seems to be the same. And we are stuck in the same ways of cooking. As Indians, this will typically look like this. Lunch is roti dal sabzi or rice dal sabzi. Dinner is roti chicken curry or rice fish curry. Breakfast is dosa, upma, idli and poha. Then twice a week will be something fancy like pizza or Chinese food. And yes, I know you're shocked at how accurately I just described your entire weekly meals like that. But this is because we are all so comfortable with the way we eat. And this comfort becomes a big problem when we try new food or want to change our diet to lose weight or get healthier. These default comfortable dishes become our biggest barrier to trying new things, healthier things. And just like in so many past episodes, I have spoken about breaking out of your comfort zone. Here too, I'm asking you to break out of your comfort zone for food. Try new things, experiment and fail, learn and grow. And when I tell my personal coaching clients about trying new ways of cooking, there is always that resistance at first. They can't break out of the dal roti sabzi mindset. All the recipes you know are called your repertoire. And as your habit coach, I want you to increase your repertoire for food. Food that you like eating. Food that you know how to cook. And this all starts by trying one new dish each week. That's it. One new healthy dish each week. Something that you can eventually add to your weekly menu. 
not as one of those special items, but as almost an everyday item. Experiment with different kinds of vegetables and not maybe having roti along with it. Experiment with cauliflower rice instead of actual rice. And some of you might have actually seen me making this on my Instagram feed, which is at Ashton Doc. So your simple habit to gradually change the food and the way that we eat and hence become healthier is by trying just one new dish each week. This is not a fancy dish or a cake or a dessert or those banana breads that suddenly became a trend. This is a dish you can make for yourself and the whole family. This dish must be new, different and healthy. And even if you have no cooking skills and manage to burn water, try knowing that you'll never, ever, ever be able to burn the mushrooms. So start these habits and share with us your progress using the hashtag TheHabitCoach. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Ashtin Doc on Twitter and Instagram. You can find lots more information on my website, awesome180.com or check out different content on my YouTube channel called A-W-E-S-O-M-E 180. That's Awesome 180. I hope you enjoyed that show. I'd like to thank our sponsors this week and tell for supporting us. Great, great, great week on the network. If you haven't been listening, why haven't you been listening? You should be listening. Rohan Joshi was on Uncle Please Sit, discussed the toxicity of the Indian pop culture. Really, really fun conversation to listen to. Rajiv Salman, the founder of Sula Wines, was on Cyrus Says. Again, I think that was a fun conversation. Also want to call out the season finale of Yuta. Yuta is our military history podcast. Definitely do check that out. It's a really, really great listen. And finally, I want to just remind you all that, you know, it's a dark time. But if you need a smile, go check out the Smile India podcast by Shifa Matra. It's in both English and Hindi. And I think that you will really, really enjoy the kinds of things that she's talking about there. And with that, I hope to see you again next week. Have you ever wondered how successful people do their thing? How do they navigate the challenges they often face? Are you wondering about the future of restaurants, film, education, technology, and everything else in between? Hi, I'm Gauri Devidyal, best known for being one of the brains behind the table, an award-winning restaurant in Bombay. One thing my life as a restauranter has given me is the opportunity to meet with some truly inspiring people, most often just by chatting with strangers at the community table. And that's what this podcast is about. It's about learning the new dimensions of business and understanding how different people swim this sea. It's an opportunity for me to pick their brains and ask them all the questions on my mind, whether it's about learning from their past experiences or talking about future trends. Through their journeys, stories and insights, I hope you too, like me, will come away inspired and energized. So come, join me every Wednesday with your favorite drink because this round is on me.